Policy Club. As many of you know, I have been interviewing Lindsey Williams for many years now. And in case you don't know who he is, he served as a missionary on the Trans-Alaska Pipeline for about three years back in the 70s. And as a result, he became friends with many of the elite that rule the world. And he listens to what they say, and then he turns around and tells us their plans. Now, he's just come out with a brand new DVD. It's called The Elite Plans for the Crash. Yep, that's what he does. He tells you what they say that we can look for before the big financial crash comes. And I don't think it's too far away. This particular DVD is normally a gift of $38. However, if you order it today, you can get it for a gift of just 30 bucks. And you can get it by going to prophecyclub.com or calling us at 785-266-1112. You want to know when the crash is coming? Then here you go. Let's go listen to Lindsay Williams tell you about the elite plans for the crash. My elite friend has never one time been wrong in 37 years. Not once has he ever told me anything that it didn't happen exactly like he said it was going to take place. This is happening before your eyes, and the average American has not the slightest idea what is going to take place. There is a collapse that is underway right now that is going to affect your family more than the collapse of the American dollar. And you must take precautions accordingly. China is on the verge of collapse. I saw the 60 Minutes article or 60 Minutes uh, television article, news article on, on Chinese real estate. And I don't know, if people didn't get a chance to see it, go to YouTube and look at it. The massive China real estate bubble. I don't, I was trying to explain it to Joe, and I, I don't think that we can pro- properly edify this to you over the radio, right? If we, if we played it, 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 it doesn't have the same effect because I was like, okay, yeah, yeah, right, okay, yeah, 60 minutes, China, yeah, they, yeah, they're building stuff and nobody's in it, everybody gets it, yeah, I've heard of that, done that, right, and then you, you actually showed it to me, and it's not, you know, the, the guy that did the report and says, listen, China's building like 24 of these every year, and they're talking about cities. Right. And so you're thinking about a city, you're like, okay, yeah, well, big deal. So they built the Flagstaff or they built the Tucson. That's not the type of city they're building. No, they're building San Diego and uh, Phoenix. I mean, and, and, and they're empty. They're empty. And they've been empty. So this is Zheng Zhao, and we are on the major highway or the major road, and it's rush hour, and yeah. it's almost empty. Gillam Tulloch is a Hong Kong-based financial analyst who was one of the first to draw attention to the housing bubble in China. He's showing us around the new eastern district of Zhenzhou in one of the most populated provinces in China. Not that you'd know it. We found what they call a ghost city of new towers with no residents, desolate condos and vacant subdivisions, uninhabited for miles and miles and miles and miles of empty apartments. What? Now, some two, three years, it looks more like, uh, you know, a nuclear issue in Russia or something, you know. It's, it's amazing what's happening. And I think the thing that people aren't quite understanding is that you look at what happened here, especially in Phoenix. You pick a, a neighborhood or a subdivision, and we were all in shock when, when subdivisions that had a builder, you know, uh, U.S. homes, stopped. Okay, they, they, had, they had 40 framed houses. And they stopped, stopped, and everybody went, oh, my God. They graded the desert out here, graded miles of desert. They put in the streets, the sewer system, the light poles, and then just stop, stop. And that's and everybody was, oh, my God, this is a tragedy. Look what happened. Bank of America, all right? Half the, half, almost every household name Bear in America Stern, went under. Gone, right. gone. Lehman Brothers, gone. Everybody else bailed out, right? AIG, all of that stuff. And here was the, the catastrophe of it all was, you know, some of us Americans got a little crazy, right? Some of them, you know, bought two homes. The real crazy guys, maybe they bought three. In China, they're talking about people buying 
ten. The middle class that made all the money that had the factories and they were running everything. They got a little bit of money that were supplying us. And when they took everything that we built, now of course that's all saturated as well. Where did they put their money? Well, they didn't come over here. I mean, we even tried to get them to come well, over listen, here. There's rules. China's not dumb. They got a law that says, guess what, Chinese citizen, you've got to keep your money here. Right. Unlike here in America, where we let you go ahead and rape and pillage all of our industry and take it all away, the Chinese don't allow that. They yes. still are a communist nation. Let's not forget that. In my opinion, based on the, the footage that I've seen, it makes what's happened here in America look like child's place. Why are they empty? I, I've heard that they have actually been sold. They've all been sold. They've all been all sold. They've all been sold. They're Absolutely. Owned. owned by people in China's emerging middle class who now have enough money to invest, but few ways to do it. They're not allowed to invest abroad. Banks offer paltry returns, and the stock market is a roller coaster. But 15 years ago, the government changed its policy and allowed people to buy their own homes and the floodgates opened. So what they do is they invest in property because property prices have always gone up by more than inflation. So and they believe it'll always go up. Yeah, just like they believed in the US. Actually, property values have doubled, tripled, and more. So people in the middle class have sunk every last penny into buying five, even 10 apartments, fueling a building bonanza unprecedented in human history. No nation has ever built so much so fast. And what's happened in Europe still looks like child's play. You're talking about vacant cities, ladies and gentlemen. You're like, you're, you're talking about driving maybe, well, it's happening here in Detroit. Talking about, well, yeah, but Detroit, we get vacant cities because all the buildings are crumbling and it's right. all right. It needs to get bulldozed. Right. They, these are brand these are new. brand new skylines of high rises made. As far as the eye can see, they disappear into the smog. And just building after building, and then the shopping mall, and, and, and the office buildings, and the. How important is real estate to the Chinese economy? Is it central? Yes, it's the main driver of growth and has been for the last few years. Some estimates have it as high as 20 or 30 percent of the whole economy. But they're not just building housing, they're building cities. Yes, that's Giant right. Giant yeah. cities being built with people not coming to live here. Yes, I think they're building somewhere between 12 and 24 new cities every single year. Unlike our market-driven economy, in China it's the government that has spent some $2 trillion to get these cities built as a way of keeping the economy growing. The assumption is if you build it, they'll come. But no one's coming. This is really completely, totally empty and it goes up. Gillum took us to this shopping mall that's been standing vacant for three years. Can I find this all over China? Yes, you can. They've simply built too much infrastructure too quickly. But I see KFC behind you. Yep. I see Starbucks over there. I see some other very recognizable American franchises coming in here. Yep. At least they, does that mean they have faith that, that this is going to ignite? No, these are all fake signs. This is to give potential buyers the they're, impression of what it might look like if they moved in. They're not real. So KFC didn't they buy haven't. this space or rent this space? No, they haven't. Starbucks? No. They just put the sign up? That's right. It's all make-believe, non-existent supply for non-existent demand. Look at that. Swarovski, Piaget. They're yeah. hoping for high-end, too. H&M, Zara. <laughs> and it's all... Potemkin. Yeah. It's surreal, and it's everywhere, like the city of Ordos in Mongolia, built for a million people who didn't show up. And no, you're not in England. You're in Thamestown, a development near Shanghai built like an English village. And it was finished, I think, around five or six years ago. And it must have cost uh, close to a billion US dollars. And you'll see it's still standing there empty. Well, I mean, I got to tell you, this is what starts world wars. Now, on top of it, okay, how many people do we have here? And they got 300 million. 300 million. Okay. Plus 11 million that they going to legalize. Right. But, and the 11 million, yeah, I mean. But they're already here. Right. So they got 50 million construction workers <laughs> building things that have been empty and will remain empty. <laughs> okay. Think about 
50 million construction workers. We don't have 50 million Walmart workers. I know. Not even close. It's crazy, isn't it? 50 million. What do they do? They'll drop your hammer. Our, this, our entire workforce, private workforce, is 100 million people. Right. They have 50 million just construction workers. How hard is it for them to drop their hammer and grab an AR-15? This is how wars start, ladies and gentlemen. But this is unprecedented. I mean, I, I don't think I can quite drive this point home. And I guess the best way would be to go take go go to Google and, and, and go to Google Earth and look at Manhattan. Okay? <laughs> All right, look right. down at Manhattan. Pretty big. Okay, pretty big. A lot of tall buildings right, in lot, Manhattan. Okay. Now multiply that by 50, and that's what's empty sitting over there. Remember, our whole economy was at the precipice of utter collapse because Seven million people may be going to lose, lose their, their homes. homes. Yep. They've got, I don't even know what the number would be, but they've got at least 30, 40 million empty homes. Right, let alone the people that have already bought them and the people that are building these empty, this empty infrastructure. Now they, they justify it with, well, you know, we still have the largest... Uh, movement of humans in the history right. of well, mankind. Well, they got 1.3 billion people. I mean, right. that's a they, lot of people. And when they brought them in, you know, when they shut all the Macladories here in Mexico and they moved all the American manufacturing to China and then they brought these people by oxen out of the rice fields, it was the largest migration of humans in the history of the world since, you know, the beginning of time. And now they, they need another one. Okay, but this was built on the backs of America. This was built on the backs of Europe. Okay, everything that used to be built oh, here, yeah. everything that was American, everything that we touched when I was a kid growing Dead up. swap, the securitization right. stuff and all of our... Remember, Alan Greenspan laid it out perfectly. Yes, they did take all these jobs that Americans didn't want. Uh, we don't want those jobs. But we have given them our financial system. So what are you, what are you talking here? I mean, what do, you, what do you think the financial exposure is to U.S. financial institutions? Because we did it. We invented NAFTA. We invented GATT. Yeah, they didn't. They didn't come over going, hey, you know what I think? You know, I'd like to have all your textile mills and car factories and televisions. And, oh, yeah, go ahead. Take it. We don't want it. No, they, we sat here and went, you know what? If we could really send this over here and still put, like, sporting goods names like Rawlings on something that we have to pay a guy who, a uh, full union labor, we got to pay him. OSHA, we got to pay all his benefits. He wants, he's got to buy cars and put his kids through school. What if we could build the same thing, make it half the quality, charge double for it, but build the guy who's building it, pay him nothing? It, it's still happening. The Wall Street Journal this morning, Whirlpool expands in China. Yes, Whirlpool, they were desperate to get in. They said, we don't have enough exposure to China, so we got them. We finally got a Chinese partner, and they're all congratulatory about the fact that they're going to be able to build whirlpools in China. That took that long, huh? Took them that long? Well, you got to get a partner. Yeah. you got to remember. We have to have a, a Chinese government partner. That's correct. Right, a communist partner. Communist. Well, let's, tell, let's call what it is. you got to be willing to, hey, listen, give us all the specs so we know how to do it all. They don't use the word red Chinese anymore. They, they're, they're red army. No, they, they don't do use that. that they're, they're nice people over there. Listen, it's going to provide them a very good platform for growth. So Whirlpool's all excited now. Yep. So where are they out of Iowa? Uh, I think they. Yeah, I think originally they're out of Iowa. I know <laughs> they had a huge plant in Iowa. I don't know if anyone still works there. That but changed, that changes the whole term out of. Where are you out of? Yeah, <laughs> I'm out of <laughs> Iowa. I'm now in Shanghai. Well, we talked about it yesterday. Let's face it, all of these companies are trying to legally, if they can, somehow get their technical headquarters to be in some other country so they can avoid paying right, taxes. Right, not paying any in income taxes. So the only thing left here is debt and denial. Well, it's like this. How much of that? You asked a great question. How big is the debt number for a building, what they've done in China? How big is it? I don't know, 100 trillion? It's got to be whatever. Tr I mean, it's got to be a huge number. Whatever it was here, multiply it by... by I don't I, know. <laughs> So let me ask you something. 12 to 24 times? I don't so know. Everything pops in China next Monday. Their, their markets crash. Everything crashes. The real estate bubble's crashing. And now we get a new Fed chief comes out in January. Going, January, yes. Well, guess what? We uh, we got to bail out J.P. Morgan. What? It's called, it's called not tarp, but carp. <laughs> like the fish. It's, it's carp. 
It's Chinese, all right? got to open up the Fed window. Right. So it's not the TARP program. It's, it's those the, Asian Chinese, right. the Chinese carp that are killing all the regular fish, and I don't know what they river lost, that is. Because the they lost all their money. They lost all the money. They lost everything. All our financial institutions are going to go under because of their exposure in the Chinese real estate market. Analysts warn that all this building has created a bubble that could burst. So if the bubble bursts, who's left holding the bag? There are multiple classes of people that are going to get wiped out by this. Um, people who have invested three generations worth of savings, so grandparents, parents and children, into properties will see their savings evaporate. Are you the biggest home builder in the world? Yes, I think maybe. That you may be. Yes, only the quantity, not the quality. Wang Shir is modest. But his company, Vanke, is a $53 billion real estate empire building more homes than anyone in China. Are homes in China too expensive today? No. Here, mm -hmm. Here's a number that I saw. A typical apartment in Shanghai uh -huh. cost about 45 times the average resident's annual salary. Even higher. Even what does higher. that mean Maybe. for your economy if, if, if it's just too expensive for the vast majority of people to So buy. I think that uh, uh, dangerous. Dangerous. That's the um, bubble. So I think that's the problem. Is there a bubble? Uh, yes, of course. There is a bubble. Yes. And the issue is, is, will it burst or not? Yes. That's the big yes. issue. If there's a bubble, that, uh, that a disaster. If it burst. If it burst, that disaster. Workers told us that many of these buildings haven't had any work done on them for weeks, months, as if the developers just don't have the money to go on. It's true. You see that happen first, that migrant workers will go home. That's often the first sign that the debt crisis is starting. The debt crisis. Well, when you stop the paying your bills, then are... everything stops. It could become a debt crisis because of the huge loans most of the developers took out. If they can't repay them, the whole economy will seize up. The government's great fear is that all this could lead to social unrest. And that's not hypothetical. Last year, when home prices fell, it infuriated all those owners of multiple dwellings who watched the value of their nest eggs plummet. And there's already been some demonstrations yes. over real estate yes. around the country. Yeah. Have you had demonstrations against your showrooms anywhere, your company? Often. So often, Wang sure shudders to think what would happen if the bubble actually burst. If that uh, bubble broken, that maybe, who knows what will happen? Maybe that, <laughs> maybe, I answer, maybe next uh, Arabic Spring. Arabic uh, Spring. Maybe, yeah. You mean people coming out and demonstrating? Mm-hmm. A lot of economists say that it's too big for even this government to control. Uh -huh. China has all of our major industry. They have Caterpillar, Boeing, your clothing, your shoes, your TV, your washing machine, the hardware in the hardware store. We don't have that in America anymore. It's all been moved to China. In order for any company to go to China, they must have a Chinese government partner. That's right. You just heard it. Unless you have a Chinese governor, a government partner. Now, when there is a collapse, and there's going to be, it's only a matter of a short time, not going to be too long off either. When there's a collapse in China, when you begin to see riots in, in the red, uh, what's going to happen? The first person that's going to be honored is that Chinese partner. Do you realize that when, when uh, Caterpillar, for instance, let's just take one major industry. When Caterpillar moved, Caterpillar tractors and road equipment, do you realize that when they moved their facilities to China, that they were required by the Chinese government to give them all of their trade secrets? Yes. All those things that they wouldn't tell to anybody in the United States of America. They wouldn't divulge it to any other company in America because they've got patents on it. And those are individual to that one company that has made them so great. Why is it that Caterpillar engines are not equaled by any other engine in the world, bar none, for heavy equipment? Uh, why? 
they have trade secrets. They have copyrights. They, they have uh, gar- nothing nobody knows. Do you realize that when, she, when Caterpillar went to China, they were required to give all of those trade secrets to the country of China? They have every one of them. Boeing aircraft, the largest builder of aircraft in the world, the ones that you fly when you go across the country or any other place on an airline today, more than likely you fly a Boeing airplane. There are more of them than any other company in the world. Do you realize that when Boeing went to China and chose a Chinese government partner, a communist, a red, a, a person that doesn't believe like we believe in America, they're not free enterprise capitalists. And they had to choose a Chinese government partner, and they had to give all of the trade secrets of Boeing to the government of China in order to be able to go in and get dirt cheap labor. So they wouldn't have to pay the unions, and they wouldn't have to pay the retirement funds, and they wouldn't have to pay... How many things can you name that, that, that we're having to pay for the American worker? But go to China... You can fire them when you want to, hire them when you want to. You don't pay any of these extras, but you give up all your trade secrets and you choose a Chinese government partner. American companies then, after going into China and India and Mexico, what have they done? Oh, please. When I was given this the other day, I was utterly appalled. I'm still sitting here almost startled by what I heard. The American companies have gone into these other countries, have moved their equipment. We don't, if we had to create, if we had to build the tanks, the war machines necessary for a war today, we could not do it. We do not have the dyes in this country. We do not have the equipment in this country. We do not have Detroit in this country. We could not fight a World War II today. You couldn't even make a Jeep. Why? All the trade secrets are gone. All been given to China. Industries moved abroad. Now, American companies have not only moved industry and equipment abroad, American companies have taken the profits that they've made out of that. You remember the number of people that I gave a moment ago that in China, the population of 1.35 billion? They're making a lot of money over there. Some of these Chinese are becoming quite wealthy, as you've just seen. And what do they do? The American companies have gone over there and sold their products to them. General Motors, uh, Chrysler, uh, on and on you go, Caterpillar, Boeing. And they're selling their products to China and selling it also out of China to other countries. And what are they doing with the profits? And when I was shown this the other day, I was dumbfounded. The profits that these American companies, now remember two of them were bailed out by you and me, the taxpayer, General Motors, Chrysler, you bailed them out, where'd they go? China. What'd they do? They're selling the cars abroad. Are they bringing the money back into America? Not on your life. They're keeping that money outside the United States of America. They have stashed American corporations, every one of them, without exception. Why do you think our government is in so much trouble? Why do you think we have so much national debt? The tax, the taxes that are being received have gone to zilch, whether it be a city or a state, a county, the federal government. The tax base is not there any longer. Why is Detroit in the trouble it's in? It doesn't have a tax base. Now, what did these American companies do with this money? They stashed it away in foreign banks. And when I was given this the other day, all of these, probably a few trillion dollars, that American companies, instead of bringing it back into America and helping the country that made them great and the free enterprise system that made them great and helping the tax load that our states and counties and cities and federal government have, instead of that, they have stashed this money abroad in banks all around the world, and, you ready? When the collapse takes place, when the interest, when the Federal Reserve chairman, whoever it may be at that time, makes a statement that interest rates are going to rise, the interest rate derivatives collapse, 
over 400 trillion, the derivative market collapses. Within 24 hours time, what they did as a test over three days will bring every currency on the face of this earth to its knees in 24 hours time. If it's paper, it's worthless. What's going to happen to all of these profits that these American companies have stashed abroad? Are you catching this? What did Mr. Salina price? I've got to go back to this. Bear with me just for a moment or two. You've got to go back to what... Well, I'm going to interrupt right there because, no, we do not have time to play the entire DVD on the radio. But I do recommend you get the DVD, and it's called The Elite Plans for the Crash by Lindsay Williams. The Elite Plans for the Crash will tell you the signs that you look for to note just before the crash is going to come. And by the way, one of the things he said would not come is this particular shutdown would not go to a default. And he was right. They got past the shutdown without defaulting on our debt. So once again, his predictions that he gets from the elite have come true. This particular DVD is normally offered at a gift of $38. However, if you order it today, you can get it for a gift to the ministry of just $30. You get it at prophecyclub.com or call 785-266-1112. It's called The Elite Plans for the Crash. Prophecyclub.com or 785-266-1112. 785-266-1112 or prophecyclub.com. You got to call today. Thank you for listening and thank you for your prayers and your gifts of support. God bless. Now from the Prophecy Club, some exciting opportunities for you. As prophecy students, we know an emergency is heading our way. And the average person can go over 30 days without food, but no more than three days without clean water. In the event of an emergency, you must have clean water almost immediately. One of the primary causes of death in emergencies is not lack of food, but rather drinking contaminated water. You can run water from a mud puddle through a Berkey and drink it. You can have clean water when others are getting sick from drinking bug-infested water. Your filter must work without pressurized water or electricity, which is why the missionaries choose Berkey. You can get a Go Berkey for $139, but I recommend you get the Royal Berkey with four filters for $364. I personally use the Crown with eight filters for all my daily water needs. A Royal Berkey looks like a large stainless steel coffee pot, 9 inches wide by 20 inches tall, with four black filters. It processes over a gallon an hour for a gift of $364. Call 785-266-1112. Ask for the Royal Berkey, 785-266-1112, or the Crown Berkey with eight filters. Or see the entire line of Berkeys by going to prophecyclub.com. In Doug Hamp's new DVD, The Injection of the Beast, in the last days, it will be as in the days of Noah. Angels were mixing their seed with humanity, and it's happening again. That's demons and humans having sexual relations, masquerading as aliens, or actually creating Nephilim hybrids for the body of the Antichrist. Then in The Fall, Feast, and Prophecy, he tells the story of how Jesus fulfilled the first four feasts at his first coming and how he will fulfill the next three in return on some future Rosh Hashanah. The Day of Atonement pictures the opening of the books and the judgment of those dead and alive. The Feast of Tabernacles pictures us receiving our mansions. Both DVDs valued at $60 for a gift of just $40 or more in the HAMP gift offer. Remember, the Prophecy Club continues because of your prayers and gifts of support, not the distribution of DVDs. There are 30 scriptures in the Bible which say in the last days massive amounts of oil will be discovered in Israel and we believe we've been given the directive to use this prophesied oil and gas to fund worldwide soul winning. If you have questions about our vision, call 877-OIL-ISRAEL or 877-645-4772.